Incidentally, I wore the tie because it represents me, grumpy. I call this my grumpy tie. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, grumpy in a food fast line. Here you go, fine, sir. Thank you. I love this service. You are the most enjoyable people, I tell you. <laughs> Nothing like clapping yourself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My scripture is 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 and 15. Listen to these. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be patient with everyone. My subject today is impatience, the national disease. If you don't believe it, when you leave, get out on the street, and when the light turns green, wait a little while. <laughs> We're an impatient people. We are, we are, even Christians are. I preached this at the first service. I had so much confession, I could hardly stand it. Everybody came out and felt they had to tell me why. But uh, take my word for it. And I just, I planned something different, but some things happened in my life where I was really impatient and so embarrassed, I thought I would talk about it this morning. So, uh, Goofy is in this line. He's a, a bad guy. In the Word of God, there's the fruit of the Spirit. There are three things I want for you today. Take a look at them. If you have a bulletin in front of you, and are they a little, running a little slow today? And they're avail are they available to you? Okay. They're beautifully done by Carol. And uh, I just want you to, first of all, look at the nine. They are the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. And I want you to go through it, and I want you to number them. And, and if you're really good at it, a high number. If you're really bad at it, a lower number. Only Jesus is 10 at all nine. At my best, I get up to seven. On maybe the first three, love, joy, peace, I think I enjoy those and they're a part of my life. The fourth one is a stinger. I give it a three at my best days, three. And the other one is the last one, the ninth one is self-control. And it seems to me that sometimes there's an overlap with the fruit of the spirit and the one on self-control and patience seem to be of the same ilk. And I, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning just the other day, and as I got up, I was feeling really bad about that text. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, etc., etc., self-control, okay? It goes through those. And I thought, good night, that's bad grammar. The fruit of the Spirit is, and it lists nine, that should be the fruits of the Spirit are. So I went to my library and I looked, pulled down the commentaries on that passage of scripture, which is Galatians 5. And as I looked at it, none of them were helping me at all. It was a lot of stuff and the one said, pick something and you work on it. That isn't about pick something and work on it. It is about the whole of that. Think about that. It's the reason it says the fruit of the Spirit is, is it's because it's a cluster and you don't take them and separate them. And the best way for me to understand it at two o'clock in the morning was, it's like a fruit salad. Think about it. I took, I wrote out nine fruits that I like in a salad. And I prefer fruit salad to vegetable salad. I think vegetable salad may be healthier, but I like fruit salad. And so I started watermelon, Bing cherries, globe grapes, uh, Muskmelon, I think they have a cantaloupe, I guess it is, to Americans. Uh, and then uh, there were nine of them, okay? 
I like a fruit salad that has all of that. In fact, when I go to the grocery store, I get this cart full of fruit, and I go out, and, and I can hardly wait to get home and put enough so that I, I taste all of them. And I thought, that's really what the Word of God is all about, that the fruit of the Spirit is like a fruit salad. It's a spiritual salad where all the ingredients need to be, and you don't pick out and say, I have the fruit of the Spirit because I have picked out one. That's not true. I believe that all of these work together and we are at our best when all nine of them are part of our work and life as people of God who are spirit-led. Think about that. The second thing I want to talk about is there are two kinds. There are two Greek words and uh, do we have them on the board? That's next. Ta-da! The first one is patience with people. When you see anybody this week and they say, what's your problem? You say, you're working on your Mac, well, through me at or whatever that word is. <laughs> you had never heard that pronounced in Swedish before. <laughs> but there are two kinds of patience in the New Testament, that which is with people and that which is with things. Okay, with people is when you have a run in with someone and you just get out of line, and you're kind of ashamed, but you, what in the world? And, and you are impatient with people. You, we, you know what that's like. And the other one is impatience with things. As a father, and my kids are now 54 and 51, so they're not little kids anymore. They're little kids like Mike. And... Uh, Where did he go? He didn't like the sermon the first hour. <laughs> I'll get him. Okay, so when I was a father and had little kids, some of you who are going through that and some of you are grandfathers, and I occasionally meet great-grandfathers, and boy, that's wonderful, that's great. But what I used to do we always had, we bought the wrong toys. You had to put them together. Oh, that's mean. And I remember, bought him a wagon. Oh no, I gotta put all the wheels on it. I had to put that whole thing together. And I never could follow the directions and it just made me, mm-hmm. So, uh, the, the most recent one was friend wife, Linda and I were down, we go to only good stores, okay? Walmart. And so, if I want to spend a little more money, I go to Walmart. And so I go to Walmart and uh, we pick out that she wants a nice little table for the, the bedroom and it has one drawer, wheels. It says, if you will follow these directions and then it lists the six kinds of screws that are there. So I have all these little cups with all full of screws. If you follow the directions, it could be an hour, as long as an hour and a half. Is eight close? <laughs> When I got finished, after eight hours, I kid you not, Linda said, that looks good. We need two. <laughs> I guess that's a compliment, but the next time I did it in five, I'm growing. Okay, all I want to do is remind you, there is patience with people and patience with things. Now let me get to what I think is the heart of what I have to say. I think there are three possibilities for believers. One is to do it poorly and still be a Christian, but you're still fighting impatience. But occasionally you say, mm, you know, I came out of this home, I've had these things, I'm, I'm not feeling well, whatever. And we make excuses, but we're believers, and, but we don't do very well on it. We're kind of impatient. And the second is when you have gotten along and you've matured in your faith and you become more and more patient. And sometimes people see it and they're so encouraged by it and, and you're doing what you ought to do. But the first type is where I got my subject. I went to see Linda who will be at the third service today. She's recovering from hip surgery and then she has some other problems that arose, but uh, she's home and life is so good. But uh, uh, we went out and uh, I saw her 
at rehab. And so it got a little late and my stomach began, you know those organ recitals? Mm. Every, every, everybody's calling out, and I don't know all of them by name, but uh, they, they're uh, singing again. And so I know it's time to go eat. And so I thought I'd go through one of the fast food places. And I'm not going to tell you which fast food, because between Ocala and Leesburg, there are a lot of them. And I'm not going to blackball any one of them. It could have been any of them. But I get up, bring my little car up, and they say, could we help you? Of course you could help me. Why do you think I'm here? Uh, <laughs> so I order it, and this thing moves along so slowly. There were four cars ahead of me. Another couple, three minutes. I've just read, recited all of Psalm 119. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going through this, and it is really slow. Finally, I get up there, and I almost forgot why I was there. And so I said, that'll be so much money. I gave her that money, and she disappeared. Five minutes later, I still hadn't seen her. So I knock. You ever knock on the window? <laughs> yes. I said, would it help if I move my car up ahead so all the others who are behind me are kind of getting impatient? <laughs> so I, she said, that'd be okay. So I moved up. Five more minutes in the fast food line shows up with my bag. She said, here it is. I said, young lady, you know what you're doing? You're building the business of all the other fast food places tonight. <laughs> Terrible service. And I can't stand that. I'm insulted. And then she looked at my shirt. North Lake Presbyterian <laughs> Church. I could just see her face looked at that, and then she looked back at me, and it didn't say a word. It was that look that says, I'll never go to his church. They make you grumpy. <laughs> so if you're here, thank you. But uh, I've gone back two different times, and I can't find her. I, I felt I just owed it to her. But grumpy, just grumpy, what I should have said, you're obviously having some difficulties, maybe in the kitchen, maybe you're not responsible, maybe you were picking on the, on the one who brings the message, you know, messenger. And so I didn't say any of those nice things, I didn't say anything Christian, I just was grumpy. Well, the third type. And this, I believe, is possible, and it's what I call godliness. It's a difference of either of those two. And part of what I have to say here, I learned when I was in seminary. I went to Fuller Seminary in Pasadena, and the president of our school was one of those bright, bright fellows that I just adored. I have, I've quoted him so often, and, and sometimes when, if I say something, people say it's bright, then I have to confess I got it from Carnell, uh, because I don't have many bright thoughts. But I, I've, everything I've taken I, that's good, it belongs to the body of Christ, it's ours. And so, uh, but Carnell said there are two ways to be righteous. One is to do the righteous thing, and the other is to fail in it, but to acknowledge that you're in progress, and you're sorry, and you really want to work at it, and you go to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. I'm, I'm making progress, but I'm not there yet, and I don't want to be this way. And I believe the Lord looks on the heart and says, you either do it or you're greatly sorry and you're working at doing it. I think that's godliness. For, for none of us is perfect. Do you know in Romans 7, Paul said, there's a war going on within the old nature and the new nature. And sometimes the old nature pops up. I think for most of us, after we've walked with the Lord most of our lives, it isn't as much as it used to be. But sometimes the better you do, the worse is the devil. <clears throat> and you and I are going to have those impatient moments. But be patient with us. We're in progress. And aren't you glad that he did not die for a holy people? He died for sinners. And what we are is by the grace of God and the privilege of responding to that grace in the power of the Spirit of God who wants to create in us that spiritual salad. Thanks for the privilege of sharing my sin. I pray for you, you pray for me. 
we're in progress, but hopefully moving forward. Bless your hearts. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have to serve a living God who came into this world and tasted every temptation we have tasted, and yet without sin. And so we come to you, dear Lord, and say, we confess our waywardness. We want to do better. We want to more accurately represent you. We want to be a people who confess that we are in process, who confess that we're dependent upon a great God. And when we look good, it's because we let him have his way in us. To that end, we pray in thanksgiving in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.